We're now told that Leopold Stokowski was born on April the 18th, 1882, in St. John's Wood, London, the son of a Polish cabinet maker. As quite a tiny child, he started studying a quarter-sized violin and also studying the piano and the organ. He went on to the Royal College of Music, where his tutors included Parry, Wolford Davis and Elgar, and from there to Oxford, where he took a music degree. Soon afterwards, he went to America for the first time as an organist. But he'd always longed to play on what he described as the greatest instrument in the world, the modern symphony orchestra. And soon he was conducting in Paris, Cincinnati and in London. It was in the old Queen's Hall in Langham Place on May the 22nd, 1912, that Stokowski, then 30 years of age, appeared for the first time on the rostrum with the London Symphony Orchestra in a programme designed to demonstrate versatile command of his chosen instrument. That concert was a great success, and soon afterwards, the brilliantly promising young man was asked to become principal conductor of the Philadelphia Orchestra, a position he was to hold for 26 years until 1938. These were controversial years. Stokowski remodelled the orchestra and made it world famous. He drew from it a quite unmistakable, individual, extremely sonorous sound. He made his own arrangements of the classics to suit his own style. One example is Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor. And sometimes he made cuts and rearrangements in scores if he thought they were an improvement. Well, these sumptuous arrangements weren't to everyone's taste. And Stokowski became involved with Hollywood in popular films, which made some people question his seriousness as a musician. But in Walt Disney's Fantasia, he tried new, pioneering methods of recording, which heralded the stereophonic age. Since the Philadelphia days, Stokowski's conducted most of the major American orchestras, including the All-American Youth Orchestra, and that's an indication of his lifelong interest in young people and in the future of music. Without any concessions to advancing age, Stokowski's continued to accept engagements to conduct major orchestras all over the world. Here he is on the rostrum just a few years ago in Copenhagen. And just ten weeks ago, he celebrated his 90th birthday in New York. Stokowski became an American citizen in the year 1915. Well, if we chiefly think of Stokowski as a glossy publicist of music, we surely do less than justice to him as a pioneer because quite apart from his experiments in orchestral sound, he's always championed the work of modern composers. And in fact, he eventually lost his job with the Philadelphia Orchestra through being too avant-garde. And in that LSO concert in 1912, he included Debussy's La Midi d'un Faune, which was then still widely regarded, to quote Stokowski himself, as amorphous, unintelligible and immoral. Well, of course, today it's easily accepted, as the maestro says, both as pure music and as music which, in his own words, suggest the dim twilight of a remote and exotic land, a dream picture of primitive Greece, of an Arcadian and ideal existence.
Prelude à l'après-midi d'un phone by Debussy with Leopold Stokowski conducting the London Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> 